Welcome back. Today we're talking about how to spot iodine deficiency. Okay. You might be thinking iodine, that's just in salt. Right. It, but it's connected to way more than we realize. Yeah, it really is. And we're going to be looking at some research from Micah, who has spent years compiling research on iodine and its impact. Uh huh. He believes that iodine deficiency might be at the heart of a lot of the health problems that we're seeing today. Yeah. And you know, it's so fascinating because iodine is actually essential for life. Right. Like every single cell in our body needs it. Exactly. And Micah's website, The Iodine Index, has a ton of information on this. It really does. He argues that we're so focused on adding iodine to salt to prevent goiters. Right. But then we're also told to cut back on salt. Exactly. So are we sort of inadvertently causing other problems? Yeah. Well, and that's, I think, one of the biggest things that he kind of brings to light is, mm. you know, we're so quick to jump on these bandwagons of like, oh, salt is bad. You know, like, right. let's just cut it out completely. When really there's so many nuances to it. Right. It's like we're solving one problem, but maybe creating others. Yeah. And the range of conditions that he connects to iodine deficiency is pretty surprising. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're talking major things like mm. breast cancer, thyroid cancer. Yeah ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, even hypothyroidism. Yeah, you know, and what's interesting is yeah. a lot of these conditions are things that are just skyrocketing right now. Right. You know, we're seeing more and more of these chronic illnesses, mm. and it makes you wonder, is there something that we're missing? Wow, those are some serious conditions. Yeah. Are there any connections to things that people might not think about right away? Absolutely. Micah even suggests that there could be links to things like chronic fatigue. Oh. fibromyalgia, even ADHD. ADHD. That's not something you typically associate with ionine. Right. And the list doesn't stop there. Right? No, not even close. But what else is there? He's connected iodine deficiency to things like atherosclerosis, excess mucus production, headaches, hypertension. So like almost everything. We're talking infections, liver disease, even nephrotic syndrome. Wow. Which is a serious kidney disorder. Nephrotic syndrome. That's a pretty big leap from just thinking about iodine and salt. Right. Why does Micah see so many connections? Well, he uses a great analogy to explain it. Oh, okay. You know, imagine trying to build a skyscraper without steel beams. Okay. It just wouldn't work. No. Or a paper airplane with wood. Right. You know, our bodies need specific nutrients, and iodine is like a crucial building block. So iodine is like the steel beams of our cells. Exactly. Okay. And without enough of it, things might not function the way they should. That's a really clear way to put it. But yeah. before we go any further, I think it's important to point out that Micah's work goes beyond just iodine. Right. He's looking at the bigger picture of how we can all reach our full potential. Absolutely. And, you know, okay. it's not just about addressing deficiencies. Yeah. It's about understanding how our bodies work and what they need to thrive. Yeah. So he talks about the importance of other nutrients like selenium okay. and magnesium as well. So it's about more than just iodine. Right. It's about a more holistic approach to health. Exactly. Okay. And it makes you wonder, could you be iodine deficient? That is a good question. Right. And that's something that we're going to talk about a lot more after the break. Yeah, definitely. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you don't want to feel like crap, it's time to try iodine. And figuring that out can actually be a little tricky. Okay. You might think a blood test would give you the answer. Right. Yeah. Seems straightforward. But it's not always that simple. Why not? A blood test seems like the most straightforward way to check. Well, a blood test just shows you the iodine levels in your blood at that particular moment. Okay. It doesn't tell the whole story. What do you mean? It's kind of like taking a picture of a busy street, you know? Okay. You see what's there at that second. Mm -hmm. But you don't know how many cars were there an hour ago right. or how many will be there later. So the blood test is just a snapshot, yeah. not the full picture of your iodine levels. Exactly. What we really need to know is how much iodine is actually stored in your tissues. Okay. Because that's where it's actually used. That makes sense. Yeah. So if a blood test isn't the best way to check for iodine deficiency, what is? Well, Micah suggests something called a 24-hour urine loading test. Okay. Okay. It sounds a little complicated, Yeah. but it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, break it down for us. How does this urine test work? So you take a specific dose of iodine, Okay. and then you collect your urine over the next 24 hours. Okay. And by measuring how much iodine shows up in your urine, 
you can get a better idea of how much your body is actually holding on to. So if a lot of the iodine you took shows up in your urine, it could mean that your body isn't absorbing it well. Exactly. And might be deficient. It's like trying to fill a leaky bucket. Okay. If the bucket's full, it's going to overflow when you add more water. Mm -hmm. But if it's empty, yeah, it'll soak it all up. I like that analogy. It makes it much easier to understand. Yeah. Now, Micah also mentioned something called pulse dosing. Yes. What is that? Pulse dosing is a really interesting concept. Okay. It's based on the idea that our bodies are actually pretty smart. Okay. And they know what they need. Mm -hmm. So if you're deficient in something, yeah. you'll often crave foods that are high in that nutrient. Oh, so if I'm suddenly craving sushi, maybe that means I need more iodine. It's possible. Okay. But, of course, it's important to listen to your body. Right. But also consider other factors as well. Yeah. You don't want to base your entire diet on cravings. Right. It's about paying attention to the signals but not jumping to conclusions. Exactly. Now, we've been talking about getting enough iodine. Mm-hmm. But there's also this big push to reduce our salt intake. Right. And didn't we say that iodine is added to salt? You bring up a really important point, and yeah. it's something that Micah talks about quite a bit. He's concerned that this advice to cut back on salt, while well-intentioned, mm -hmm. could actually be contributing to iodine deficiency. That makes sense. If we're cutting back on the very thing that's fortified with iodine, we might not be getting enough. Exactly. And while too much salt can definitely be a problem, right. Micah emphasizes the importance of choosing unrefined salt. Okay. Like Himalayan pink salt or Celtic sea salt. So not all salt is created equal. Right. Unrefined salt not only provides iodine, Sorry. but it also contains other essential minerals that our bodies need. Hmm. It's about choosing the right kind of salt right. and using it in moderation. This whole conversation is really highlighting the importance of looking beyond the headlines yeah. and understanding the nuances of nutrition. Yeah. It's not always black and white. I couldn't agree more. It's about finding a balance mm -hmm. and making informed choices based on all the information available. And Mike is doing a great job of bringing this information to light. Absolutely. And helping us all make those choices. So we've talked about the importance of iodine, mm -hmm. potential signs of deficiency, yeah. and ways to assess our levels. Yeah. But what about actually addressing a deficiency? Oh, okay. What are the next steps? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. Right. We know iodine is important, but how do we make sure we're getting enough mm -hmm. without going overboard? That's where things can get a little tricky. Okay. <laughs> you know, you can't just start taking tons of iodine supplements right. and hope for the best. So what's the right approach? Micah really stresses the importance of a personalized approach. Okay. You know, he says there's no one size fits all solution when right. it comes to iodine. That makes sense. We're all different. Our bodies have unique needs. Exactly. And so he recommends starting slowly okay. with a low dose of iodine mm. and gradually increasing it. Okay. While paying close attention to how you feel. It was all about listening to your body mm -hmm. and adjusting accordingly. Absolutely. Because some people might experience side effects if they take too much iodine. Like what kind of side effects? Things like anxiety, insomnia, even heart palpitations. Oh, wow. Or acne. Mm. So if that happens, it's a sign to back off. Okay. Or stop altogether and talk to your doctor. So it's not as simple as just popping a supplement. Right. There's more to it than that. And it's also important to think about the type of iodine supplement that you're using, too. Right. Micah suggests looking for high-quality supplements well. that contain a blend of different forms of iodine, okay. like potassium iodide uh -huh. and molecular iodine. Why is it important to have those multiple forms? Well, each form has its own unique properties and benefits. Okay. And using a combination can help your body absorb and utilize it more effectively. I think we often take iodine for granted. Right. But it clearly plays a much bigger role in our health than many of us realize. It really does. And Micah's work, I think, really challenges us mm -hmm. to rethink our approach to nutrition. Okay. And to look beyond just calories and macronutrients. Right. You know, it's about understanding yeah. the vital roles that these nutrients play in our bodies. And his focus on personalization yeah. and listening to our bodies is something we can all apply to our health journey. Absolutely. It's about taking ownership of our health. Yeah. And making informed choices mm. based on the best information available. For anyone listening who wants to learn more about iodine and explore this topic further, Micah's website, The Iodine Index, and his video series, 
methylate.me yeah. are fantastic resources. They're great. They're full of valuable information that can help you make informed decisions about your own health. I highly recommend checking them out. So we've learned that iodine is essential. Uh -huh. Deficiency is more common than we think. Mm -hmm. And taking supplements should be done carefully. Right. And with personalized guidance. Absolutely. This leaves us with one final thought-provoking question. Okay. If iodine is so crucial for our health, Mm -hmm. even in ways we might not expect. Right. How can we advocate for a more comprehensive understanding of nutrition, mm. one that goes beyond just counting calories and focuses on the vital roles these nutrients play in our bodies? That's a great question to ponder right. as we move forward. Yeah. It encourages us to look beyond the surface mm -hmm. and explore the intricate connections within our bodies. It's clear there's still so much to learn. And Micah's research is a great starting point for anyone wanting to delve deeper into this fascinating world of nutrition. Absolutely. And how it impacts our lives. For sure. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of iodine. It's been a pleasure. We hope you found it informative and empowering. Until next time, keep learning, keep questioning. And keep exploring. Your health is worth it.